how's it going guys this is sorry sexy aka some douchebag and right now guys uh as of right now guys i just hit over uh 18 000 subscribers guys it is january 1st 2018 and it may be like a weird number it may not seem like a big deal at all you know it's gonna be a really big deal once i hit 20 000 subscribers but anyway guys i just wanted to make this video just to thank you guys thank you so much because uh, it was kind of funny because the last subscriber special i made was a 16 000 subscriber special and uh let's just say it was it was kind of weird <coughs> this is my 16 000 subscriber special <coughs> <laughs> Anyway guys, I just want to get straight to the point not only to uh, thank you guys for uh, 18,000 subscribers But to also um, do a Q&A for you guys because uh, on uh, one of my previous videos for it was like an update for the 30 the alternate day uh, fasting challenge the 30 day one That uh, I asked you guys to uh, possibly uh, comment down below and ask me a question and hopefully in an upcoming uh, Subscriber special or q and I would answer that question so I'm going all the way back from months ago and pulling questions from that video. So uh, let's go. This is an 18,000 subscriber special Q&A special. <laughs> Question one from Romando Garcia. Hey man, you're doing great. I saw your transformation video and I must say that I'm impressed. I have a question. Uh, how do you stay motivated and stay on a diet and not cheat on a diet? You definitely earned a new subscriber. Thank you so much. You think you could start posting workout videos or workout dieting tips? It would be very cool. Anyway, love your channel and keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Armando. So the first part of your question, uh, how do I stay motivated and stay on a diet? That's actually a very good question. How do I do that? One of the easiest ways I find to stay motivated and stay on a diet is to have like a, a person you look up to or any kind of physique that you're striving for. Uh, there's been a lot of like inspirations for me, like um, Jeff Side. Uh, Matt Ogis. I remember uh, when I was doing the 12 week tra that last 12 week transformation when I dr came from 268 down to 190. During that time, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Matt Ogis was uh, posting his uh, let up, his uh, lead up to the his uh, competition. You know, so he was constantly posting like a uh, weekly and uh, you know physique updates and um, weight updates and dieting you know tips and stuff like that throughout the, that. Uh, prep because his prep or his contest was in April and the 12 week transformation was ending in April So it was like, you know, he was on a transformation and I, and I was on a transformation as well and um, Yeah, so during that time I believe uh, Matt Ogis was a huge inspiration for me to stay motivated on that diet because he was the one that um, That got me into switch over from doing keto to doing a uh, low carb higher fat and carb cycling and that kind of thing which also works very well you know other than just keto how do you not cheat on the diet um crap no because um even during the 12-week transformation i had cheat days here and there and um i just didn't let them you know control me or just let it just ruin me mentally you know um uh, i will speak of this last one uh the last cheat day when i had on day seven uh last sunday i definitely did regret it because uh uh, the family came over they brought over leftover dessert from Christmas and all this other stuff and uh, They brought it all over and I didn't just I could have just been like hey get the fuck out of here I'm not eating that shit, you know, but I didn't want to be mean or anything like that So it's like oh, okay, whatever. Let's just hang out have a good time and stuff like that, you know oh, Even during the, the 12 week uh, transformation when I dropped uh, 78 pounds or even the one before that when I dropped over a hundred pounds I was still having uh, cheat days uh, during the first one when I dropped over 100 pounds, I was having a cheat day usually uh, once a week. This was everything between uh, ice cream and cookies and just... I remember I was... Oh, man, I can't believe I used to do that because um, during that time, it turns out I was actually doing keto wrong. I thought it was just a be... It was all keto it was just high fat and high protein, just low carb, you know? But it turns out it's not that at all. It's really super high fat, moderate protein, low carb. That's the right way to do it. So uh, during that time when I was doing keto wrong, uh, I wasn't even getting enough fat. I was eating too much protein, but and my carbs were still very low. So I was just craving sugar and carbs just all the freaking time. And that's why once a week I would have a cheat day and just come up with crazy creations like just getting a tuple, like an entire carton of ice cream, putting in a giant bowl 
crushing down Oreos and putting them in the bowl, covering it with hot fudge and chocolate syrup, mixing it up all together. It's just, I swear to God, like each bite had like a couple hundred calories. It's like, oh my God, you know. But in the end, I did lose over 100 pounds. I came from 325 to 220. I killed myself in the gym. I was doing keto wrong, you know. And then once a week, I would have a cheat day. So you can have cheat days, but um, t when I did the the last 12-week uh, transformation, I did less cheat days. I did one because um, I after doing keto for a while, I went low carb, higher fat, and uh, my cheat was more of a keto day because um, I would just go super high fat on these uh, once a week of like a whole eggs, butter, and cheese. And just boost my uh, testosterone and hormones that way, you know. Yeah, the other part about your question, um, any chance of posting workout videos or workout dieting tips? Well, I'm, I'm going to be definitely doing a, a workout dieting tips and that kind of thing. But uh, posting workout videos, sadly I can't. I don't have a camera. And I'm just really broke at the moment. Like I said, I believe in previous videos, all the money I'm getting is going towards uh, food, supplement, and bills at the moment. So, sorry, no workout videos yet. But once I get a really nice high, defini high definition camera, I will definitely be vlogging a lot more and showing my workouts. So, don't worry, that time will come. So, thank you so much for your question, Armando. Question 2 from Danny Gonzalez. Hey man, I just saw your transformation video and you earned a subscriber. Thank you so much, Danny. Lost 20 pounds in one month. Good job, dude. Uh, veggies and meat mostly and running almost every day. Any tips though? I see major progress, but I want to hit 185. That's the lowest way I can go due to my body fat percentage. I want my body to, be, uh, to come in faster. Any advice? Well, I don't know how you're doing on a... You know weightlifting and stuff like that but just from the sound of it you're eating veggies and meat which is a great job good for you losing 20 pounds in one month that's freaking awesome so the only thing i could really say is that um switch more towards uh weightlifting and doing high intensity uh interval training like for you running there's no telling you could be running for more than a couple miles or running a mile straight or running for 30 or more minutes but instead of doing that do high intensity interval training usually like on a bike or a treadmill my favorite uh high intensity interval training is tabata which is um i do a uh, highest incline sprinting which is a 20 second intensity 10 second rest uh, repeat that eight times for four minutes and that's my favorite high intensity uh, interval training so try to do more um tabata try to do more weightlifting and then um if you're feeling great on veggies and meat you can stick with that or if not try uh keto you know because um when you drop your carbs uh, low enough, you're going to enter ketosis, but your body's going to need uh, an energy source, so you give it fat instead of carbs, you know? Fat is your new energy source. That's why it's so important to have plenty of fat on a very low-carb diet, so try that. So, like I said, it might be sounding weird for your body, for your protein to um, drop to 20%, but you could get away, obviously, with 20 to 25%. That's perfectly fine. Fat could be 70 to 75%, so if you want to, you could try 70% fat, 25% protein, and 5% carbs. Just stick with high fat, veggies, and meat, and you should be good. Lots of weight lifting and lots of high intensity interval training, and you'd be good to go. So thank you for your question, uh, Danny. Question number three from Golden B Bill E. What does your workouts look like? I'm, I'm starting out, and I'm trying to figure out what weight training routine I should start with. Hmm, that's a good question because you're just now starting out with like um like there's been a lot of uh, research and studies saying like uh, if you're a newbie to weightlifting that you should do full body training but it turns out that it might actually be false uh, well the reason they say that because your your body is able to recover faster that's why in the very beginning you're putting on muscle a lot faster and then later on it's very very hard when you're very experienced with weightlifting to put on muscle you know so there's no telling. I don't know how much you weigh. I don't know how old you are. I don't know your height. So just the most important thing, Golden uh, Bill E, is just to start working out. Whether you want to do splits, maybe Monday could be a chest, or maybe you could do full body training. But that's, you know, like they said before, that's usually meant for a newbies because your body's able to recover faster and build more muscle. But even for experienced athletes, uh, doing full body training is actually probably your best bet to growing a new muscle and stuff like that. So 
like I said, the most important thing is just to start working out, just start doing more cardio, start walking on the treadmill more, doing the elliptical, doing the bike, just doing something, and try to just go to the gym almost every day and only take day off when you absolutely need it. Even if you're sore, you know, people look at it as like, oh, I'm sore, like I shouldn't go work out. But no, it's actually very important to actually, even when you're sore, to keep going to the gym. If maybe if, um, for example, if uh, Monday was chest and then, on, and then on Tuesday your chest is really sore, you don't have to do another chest workout. But maybe Monday could be chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday shoulders, Thursday arms, and Friday legs, and maybe the weekend off, you know? So just start, start small like that, work your way up, and just try to go to the gym almost every day. So try to shoot for five to six days a week, whether you're doing just cardio or doing weightlifting or weightlifting and cardio, just go to the gym. So thank you for your question, Golden. <laughs> oh man, I, I can't believe I posted this, um, or, um, copy this question but for question number four why does your bro look kind of Asian and you look full white <laughs> that that's perfectly fine you know I don't take any offense to that but um for you guys that don't know or haven't been subscribed for a while my little brother does have down syndrome that's why his eyes might look kind of funny but you know he's only mild you know he's not like he's not completely really slow he's getting straight A's in all of his classes so he's doing great you know he's lost some weight which is really cool he's not he, if you look at some of my older videos from like 2014 to 2015 he was he was chunky you know and at the time I didn't remember him being chunky but looking back on the old videos I was like holy crap he was a chunky little kid you know but um yeah he's lost the weight you know he's a very happy loving kid you know but um that's why his eyes look all weird he does have down syndrome but it's only a mild form of a uh, down syndrome and that and why I look for white is because I'm Caucasian. So thank you for your question, uh, Jasper. All right, question number five from a name I don't even want to pronounce. Did anyone ever tell you that you sound like Little Dicky? Who the f is Little Dicky? <laughs> oh man, that's pretty funny. Um, but to answer your question, did anyone ever tell you that you sound like Little Dicky? No, you'll be the first one to ever actually uh, compare me to Little Dicky. But it's because um, maybe uh, both me and me and Little Dicky talk funny. Well, I was uh, born with a, uh, it's not even, I don't even know if it's a medical condition, but I was born with some, that's something that I can only compare it to is just chronic dry mouth. Think of it this way, uh, this might be a weird analogy for you weird, uh, for, not you weird, I was about to say weird guys, but for you young guys out there. But, um, basically it just feels like if you've ever, uh, smoked weed, and then you just get terrible cotton mouth, you know, and maybe you start talking a little funny, or maybe you just crave something to drink and stuff like that or something to eat but um just uh, imagine just having chronic just having that terrible cotton mouth 24 7 yeah that's that's my situation you know this comes uh, come, uh comes down to a couple of things uh how my uh tongue is you know oh my god just kill the moth uh how my tongue is i have a really fat tongue you know that's another reason why my uh sound funny uh, another thing is uh, drinking coffee or taking too much uh, caffeine when I uh, go work out. Uh, coffee really dries out your tongue a lot. That's why I'm always carrying around a, a gallon of water. So it makes my uh, speech sound a lot better as long as I keep in my, uh, my palate wet, I guess to say. But yeah, keeping my mouth wet, keeping my palate wet so I could talk better. But it gets to a point that I'm getting towards the end of a sentence and I'm talking funny. And after a question or something, I'm reaching for my gallon of water. So it's just something I've been been born with you know just having just terrible chronic dry mouth just having cotton mouth 24 7 and um having a really thick fat tongue that's why you guys might notice i talk funny so i apologize for that it's just something i'm born with but you know no one's perfect so anyway to answer your question no no you're the first person to make that uh, compared me to little dicky but anyway thank you for your question all right question number six from ddc tell me again why the fasting it certainly can't be because you want a better body uh you you do need a better one obviously Wait, you do you do need or you don't need? I mean, dang, look at you. Also, if you do the posing, why not show your legs? Are you not happy with those? Huh. I don't, I'm trying to remember where this question was from. I don't know if it was from the 30 day alternate day fasting challenge. Or maybe it was. That's probably why that was during the time when I was dropping weight and stuff like that. So it was during that time. So, um, 
So tell me again about the fasting. Why am I doing the fasting? Well, not only because um, there's so many amazing health uh, benefits from uh, fasting or intermittent fasting. Uh, it's a lot easier for your body to um, enter a ketosis and um, you know start burning more fat for energy. And when you do break your fast with meal, whether it's a carb meal or high fat, it just doesn't matter. People need to realize that uh, even when you're doing keto, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting just zero insulin bumps here and there. No, even when you break a meal, you get a slight, whether it's keto or not, but let's just in this situation compare it to keto. Even when you uh, break your fast uh, with a keto meal, high fat and protein, you get a little tiny uh, bump of uh, insulin, but it's nothing like freaking a huge surge of insulin from just drinking like Gatorade or like fruit juice or just pure sugar. You know, you get a slight bump in insulin, but nothing that's good, like nothing to like uh, be afraid of or anything like that, you know. But yes, uh, fasting has amazing benefits, guys. Um, people are afraid of uh, doing fasting because you might lose muscle. But if your diet is, is in check and you're going to the, the gym, doing high intensity of uh, training, whether it's cardio or weightlifting or both, um, Yes, uh, your body has no reason to start breaking down muscle because you get a huge surge in a human growth hormone. That's why your body is not going to start breaking down muscle because it knows how precious, precious uh, muscle is, you know. Another thing that um, why fasting is so amazing is like when you do uh, break your fast with, with, let's say it's a high carb meal, uh, you're very, you become insulin sensitive, which is actually a very good thing, which means that, um, you know, you don't have to worry about any uh, drawbacks or any... Um, possible repercussions from a break in a fast or even a carb meal being insulin resistant is bad that people who are diabetic are insulin resistant meaning that your body is running out of insulin or is that pumping out too much insulin you know to just get the job done and to store the carbs whether it's stored in, as glycogen or stored as fat you know but when you do fasting you become more insulin sensitive so your body knows to only uh, take out just a little bit of insulin to do the job instead of a bunch of insulin which is being insulin resistant you know I know that might sound confusing but just take my word for it just alternate day fasting or intermittent intermittent fasting is freaking amazing I absolutely love it another thing um, there's another uh, health benefit to uh, fasting is your body goes through autophagy which means that uh, your body is breaking down old cells and um, old useless uh, protein and turning it to uh, newer and better cells which means your body's recovering all the freaking time while you're uh, sleeping or anything like that. And that's uh, at least to another question that I just came up with, uh, which was uh, how did you lose a loose skin while you were cutting? People think I went under went surgery or applied some kind of special lotion. Uh, no guys, um, turns out um, fasting is really good for um, eating up a useless uh, dead protein, which that's all loose skin is, it's just useless dead protein that it doesn't need. So while you're fasting, you you undergo autophagy, so your body is eating up that extra loose skin and making your skin tighter. So that's why another thing why fasting is amazing. So just low insulin, burning more fat, possibly building more muscle because you're getting a huge surge of human growth hormone and all this other stuff. And, uh, uh, other, uh, and also another part of your question, uh, why not show your legs? I think in a later question, or later comment you end up saying like oh thank you for the feedback thank you for finally showing your legs but uh i always show my legs you know it's like and yes i'm proud of them i squat every day i love legs legs are my favorite body part to work out with people love to work out arms chest back shoulders or whatever but my favorite part is always legs you know especially the quad so thank you for your question ddc all right question number seven from a name i still don't want to pronounce i tried fasting for 16 hours yesterday to give if a try was going well until I decided to head to the gym about hour 12. My blood sugar crashed so hard, I literally, I literally felt like I was, I had to eat or I was going to pass out. Is there any advice to avoid this? Did I do anything wrong? Well, huge reason that happens because your body's not used to intermittent fasting. Your body's obviously used to a more uh, higher carb uh, type of diet. So I don't know how you look. I don't know if you're overweight or you're skinny or you have a fast metabolism or not. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to assume in this case that you have a fast metabolism so you get, your body could probably handle carbs a lot more. Like I said, uh, start small. It's, sometimes it's very hard to do uh, intermittent fasting. You know, I always uh, recommend people who are starting off with intermittent fasting to do the 16 hour fast and the 8 hour eating window, which is what you tried. So you said by hour 12, your blood sugar crashed really hard. But 
that's what's going to end up happening, you know, especially it's going to take your body to get, a while to get used to it, you know, because it's really hard, you know, because I recommend people working out on an empty stomach, you know, and then breaking your uh, fast uh, post-workout, you know, but that's obviously going to be hard because your body's constantly running on carbs and running on sugar, and when you work out on an empty stomach, you're obviously going to be wor uh, running off a, a lot more fat, you know, compared to carbs, even though your body could you know start using your body's own glycogen even on an empty stomach you know so your question about is there any advice to avoid this the only thing I can really say is that um keep trying like it's gonna take your body a while to adjust you know try um doing something like um since you're you're gonna be fasting for 16 hours and you have an 8 hour eating window try your eating uh, window between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. that's what people usually do which basically means you're just uh, skipping breakfast and then breaking your fast at lunchtime, basically, you know. So just stick with it. Just keep trying. Just keep trying. Try working out on an empty stomach. That's way you could get a huge boost in human growth hormone and testosterone. And then break your fast around lunchtime. And between that eight hours, um, eight hour eating window. You, a lot of people that do 16 hour fast and eight hour eating window, they usually get about three meals in that eight hour eating window. So just stick with that. You don't have to change your diet necessarily unless you're on a very just crappy diet, you know. But just if you want to go keto, you could also try that. But maybe if you have a faster metabolism, your body might be able to handle carbs a lot more. So just make sure you're eating good, healthy protein, healthy fats, and healthy carbs, you know, and not too much sugar. Just try to cut out sugar out of your diet, you know. Even post-workout, even though after fasting, your body's going to be more insulin sensitive, which is a very good thing. Just break it with a very nice, clean meal, like maybe oatmeal, beans, um, whole grain bread, that kind of thing. So let me know how that goes for you if you're watching this video. But um, yeah, try something like that. Just stick with it. Your body will adjust. While you're working out on an empty stomach, your body's going to be using its own glycogen as fuel. Make sure you're drinking plenty of water and that kind of thing. And uh, try to cut out the sugar in your diet. So anyway, thank you for your question, whatever your name is. Alright, question number eight from another name I don't want to pronounce. Do you monitor your sodium intake? If yes, can you please share me any tips? Please plead. Please, please, whatever. Um, do I monitor your sodium? In a way, yes and no. Um, on a ketogenic diet, it's very hard to have your sodium levels very high. So to make sure to um, salt all your foods with salt and pepper, um, add a hot sauce like tapatio. I love tapatio hot sauce, you know. The USDA uh, recommends only getting about 2,300 milligrams of salt per day, but turns out uh, on a keto, that's for people that are following the normal higher carb, lower fat approach. So if you're following higher carb, lower fat, then yes, your sodium doesn't need to be all that high because if you have, if your carbs are way too high and your sodium's too high, it's it's not going to mix well. That's what's going to call cause a high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and you don't want that. But if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're going, obviously you're, you're cutting out the carbs, your insulin's gonna be very, very low, your kidneys are gonna start flushing out a lot of water, you know, a lot of vitamins and minerals and that kind of thing when you go very uh, low carb, you know? So it's actually a very good idea to, on a ketogenic diet, to avoid the keto flu, to not feel like shit all the time, to actually raise your, um, your sodium levels. So salt your foods, add hot sauce to just about everything. And instead of 2,300 milligrams, uh, they're actually on a ketogenic diet, recommending um, 4,000 to 6,000 uh, milligrams of sodium. So basically about two to three times more than USDA recommends. So if you're, that's only if you're doing keto. If you're going low carb and high fat, salt your foods, you know, eat salty sn uh, snacks that are high fat, of course, you know, like um, salted pumpkin seeds, salted nuts, uh, salted peanut butter, salted pork rinds, and that kind of thing, you know, add salt to your eggs. You know, a lot of uh, meat like uh, bacon or um, or any kind of canned foods like canned tuna, they're going to have a lot of sodium as well. So people think canned foods are just god awful for you and only think of that because of the sodium in it. But on a ketogenic diet, sodium is very, very important. So instead of 2300 milligrams, shoot for 4000 to 6000 milligrams, but only on a ketogenic diet. So thank you for your question. All right, question number 10 from uh, Ronnie. Hey, I have a question. Do you th <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, I have a question. Do you think this new fasting experiment is good for a person like me? I weigh over 300 pounds and have a thyroid problem. Yes, it's very important, especially for overweight people. Uh, fasting is uh, great. 
So if you're over 300 pounds and you have a thyroid problem, obviously recommend doing some fasting and going keto. You know, cut out all the carbs, you know, raise your fat, moderate, uh, keep your protein moderate and that kind of thing. And um, start small. Don't do alternate day fasting. That's what people, why they're having so many problems if they're taking my advice that they're immediately coming from eating every two to three hours to immediately going alternate day fasting. No, don't do that. Start small. You know, to the 16 hour fast and AR eating window. Try a keto, let your body adjust so you can start burning more fat for energy all the time, you know? So when you're fasting, because your body is used to burning fat from the ketogenic diet, when you start fasting, you're gonna buy, you know, you're not eating anything, so you're gonna start going after your own uh, body fat for energy. So that's why it makes the transition like so seamless. You start from burning fat from your food to burning fat on your love handles, basically. So, yes. Try doing something like that, 16 hour fast, 8 hour eating window, go keto, high, super high fat, moderate protein, low carb, and, you do, and you'll do just fine, Ronnie. So thank you for your question. All right, question number whatever, Tomash, how tall are you? I am six foot one, very simple, six foot one, was that, 73 inches, 74, 73 inches. Thank you for your question, yeah, 73 inches. Okay, another question from Jeffrey Scott. How tall are you and what weightlifting exercises do you do and how often? I am six foot one. I already said that, 73 inches. And what le- weight and uh, what weightlifting exercises do you do and how often? As of right now, I'm doing full body and I just find that to be uh, perfect for me at the moment. I usually start from uh, largest body part and work my way up to smallest body part. So I do uh, usually um, legs, I guess I got these uh, two mixed up because I do uh, legs, chest, back, shoulders, traps, you know, biceps, triceps, forearms, calves, and abs. So that's like 10 workouts, 10 body parts. But like I said, uh, largest to smallest. Uh, the back is, tech- is bigger than, you know, uh, chest. So maybe I should mix it up and actually do uh, legs, back, chest, shoulders, traps, so on and so forth, you know. So, and how often? I try to shoot for, um, I don't know, these uh, last few weeks, I'm going really hardcore on the diet. And even leading up to um, day one on uh, January 1st, uh, 2018, I was still working out almost every single day. I was just on a shitty diet at the time because of the holidays and that kind of thing. So, I tr- usually it averages out usually six days a week with one day off. But a lot of times, it's way, it's not even that. I usually go probably about two weeks on one day off. I only take a rest day when I absolutely need it. But for someone like you, if you're a newbie, you might do three to four days a week and then shoot for, you know, five workouts, maybe like Monday through Friday and then the weekend off or shoot for even better, six days off, Monday through Saturday and Sunday off. So anyway, thank you for your question. Ooh, good question by um, Michael. What would you say was the hardest challenge to overcome in the 30 day alternate day fast and uh, have you had any side effects or problems afterwards? Um, the hardest challenge to overcome, I guess, like the whole thing, people need to realize that the whole thing is just mental. You know, your mental for a while is just messing with you, you know, and um, because for a while I was doing targeted keto, which was just getting a little bit of carbs post-workout, then I moved to higher carb, lower fat is when I switch over to higher carb, lower fat, which is actually the time I hit a plateau. That was during the time I started uh, getting a mood problems, just feeling like crap mentally all the time because I wasn't getting enough fat in my diet. So when I switched over to uh, higher carb, lower fat, back to keto again, high fat, low carb, like I felt great all the time. I was running off of fat all the time anyway, you know, whether I was fasting or whether I was eating, I was still burning fat 24 seven. And any side effects or problems afterwards, um, well, right after the challenge end, I went on a four month of bulk. I switched from alternate day fasting to doing six to eight small meals, higher carb with a cheat day on the weekend. Having a cheat day on the weekend, even though I was already bulking was a huge, like big, that was dumb. You know, I shouldn't have even done that. It should have been a clean bulk, no cheat days or any or anything like that because all that cheat day did was, um. It might have um, satisfied my cravings a bit, but other than that, because my my diet was uh, high in carbs and protein anyway, that that cheat day, all that did cheat day did was uh, go straight to fat and really nothing else, you know. So, 
If you're going to clean bulk, I highly recommend don't do uh, cheat days, you know. Maybe a cheat meal. That's about it, you know. So, uh, any side effects or problems afterwards? Uh, no. Really, that's probably... The only problem is that after the 30-day experiment, I went back to uh, bulking. But because of that bulking, I actually put on some new muscle mass because... Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've never felt this good at 250 pounds ever in this uh, current situation. Usually, um, 250 in the past has just been very, very uh, uh, still overweight, you know. I'm not saying I'm like very lean at 250 or anything like that, but I have some decent definition. I can see my abs at 250, and I could probably get, back, get down to like 220-ish and be very, very lean and be under 10% body fat, you know. So anyway, thank you for your question, uh, Michael. All right, question whatever from uh, Jordan Foster. This was like um, like one of the previous questions. How do you keep going with diets? How do you break through the mental toughness and be successful? Well, this question goes down to just really the mental toughness. It's like how bad do you want it, you know? Usually the first problem I have is like um, when I come from higher carb or a crappy diet to keto, all the problems usually consist within the first few weeks. But I'm at that point since I'm doing alternate day fasting that... It's not even the first few weeks, it's just the very first week, you know? Because it took a while for my body to adjust, you know, because I was eating six to eight meals a day, eating every two to three hours, constantly spiking my insulin, and then going to fasting and keto. It did take a while, but you know, like I said, the problem only consists in within the first week or so. So, right now, as of right now, I feel great. And uh, to get through the mental toughness and be successful, you know? Like I said, it's just how bad do you want to, how bad do you want to get lean? Like, if you need any, like, uh, mental support or you need any, uh, any person to look up to, look for a physique that's pretty similar to yours or just anyone for motivation. Like I said, during that time, I was inspired by Jeff Side and Matt Ogus, you know? They are a huge inspiration to me to get, da get, to get, uh, very, very lean. Another person I... I'm just uh, starting to kind of look up to or for motivation is a person by the name of Helmut Strubel, I believe his name. He's a guy with uh, the leanest percentage of body fat in the entire world. He usually maintains around 2 to 3% body fat, you know, which is absolutely, absolutely freaking crazy, you know. So I just think of that as actually a possibility for me. So it's like, what if I did keto and did alternate day fasting, not only for 90 days, but for six months, for an entire year, for the rest of my life, how lean could I possibly get down to? You know, there's absolutely no telling because I'm burning fat all the freaking time, whether I'm eating, whether I'm doing fasting, I'm constantly burning fat. So there's a chance, guys, that I might get down to that two to three percentage without actually dying, you know? But it might not be healthy, but even though keto is like the healthiest freaking thing you could do, and also, there's also a very good chance that that guy's on steroids anyway, because the guy is almost 50 years old. He's 47, and he could get down to two to three percent body fat and be that freaking lean, you know. You know, there's no telling. He might be getting pumping himself full of testosterone to actually get down that lean and be that muscular. There's no telling, but naturally, I want to see how lean I could possibly get with keto and alternate day fasting. So it's all gonna come down to how bad do you want it. So thank you for your question, Jordan. All right, question whatever from Paul Ramirez. What do you do for big traps? Show us. Um, one of the things I was able to get big traps, like in this picture, for example, was, um, this might sound weird, but I wasn't really doing all that much uh, shrugs, you know? I was doing a lot of side laterals and that kind of thing because that hits your traps as well, you know? But the very main thing was uh, two things. Uh, when I was doing um, squatting, having the bar rest on your shoulders all the freaking time and I do squatting every day which is a big reason I was able to grow big traps and another thing was um, a weighted vest like for cardio or for weightlifting but it was mainly used uh, for cardio I uh, put on this thing I have a weighted vest over here that I don't use that more often I need to start wearing it again like everywhere I go just walking and getting used to carrying that weight all the time it rests it rests on your neck and traps all the time and keeps them under tension throughout your entire workout so a weighted vest and uh squatting every day was the main reason i was able to grow uh, big traps and uh so yeah that's it no shrugs or anything guys so thank you for your question and for the big one the one you've all been waiting for the question you've been looking forward to and that's the freaking title of this video from tyler hoops 
Hey man, I saw your 12 week diamondized transformation video and I was wondering what was your diet was during those 12 weeks. Thank you. So guys, there wasn't no really all this kind of crazy, you know, diet I was on. So if you're if you're doing the 90 day transformation challenge along with me, you could do this diet. It works great, you know. But um this is how I did it. During the first four weeks, four, the first four weeks I went strictly keto. No carb days, no cheat days, no nothing. Strictly keto. Then, during the second four weeks, uh, I went uh, carb cycling. That was during the time I was looking up to Matt Ogis during the time. So I switched over from burning, having a high fat, low carb diet to doing carb cycling, which was higher carb, lower fat. And then um, that's when I started getting great results, you know. I went four weeks strictly keto. So my body was very insulin sensitive. So when, when I started introducing carbs again, I just had this amazing amount of en energy. I was eating um, eggs, no, it was egg whites, tuna, beans, and uh, whole grain uh, bread or whole grain uh, uh, tortillas. So I would go like fat-free refried beans, fat-free uh, black beans, but I think they naturally have fat-free uh, anyway, you know, so just black beans, fat-free refried beans, egg whites, tuna, whole grains, and then uh, you, either once a week or once every four days, depending on how I felt, I will have a very, very high carb day, but very, very low fats. And the thing I did was an um, entire box of uh, shredded wheat cereal and an entire gallon of skim milk. And that was my meal, guys. Just very low in fat. That entire box of shredded wheat cereal had less than 10 grams of fat. Skim, skim milk had zero grams of fat. And shredded wheat cereal, uh, the ones I got, it had a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. It had a... Uh, a lot of protein as well and there's a lot of protein in skim milk as well and I'll just take that with my uh, fish oil CLA and uh, multivitamin and that kind of thing so that's what I did for the second four weeks during the last uh, four weeks I started introducing a kind of keto again but um, I went low fat and low carb and it was high protein meats and vegetables and then at the time I thought I was starving myself, but this was the very first time I started introducing intermittent fasting, even though at the time I didn't even know what it was. I thought I was literally just starving myself. A couple of days of the week, usually like um, two or three days out of the week, I would just go work out, kill myself, do lots of cardio, and just not eat that day. And I thought I was, um, you know, starving myself. And in a way I kind of did, I was, but no, I was actually just fasting. So that's why I ended up losing a lot of loose skin during that uh, transformation and I didn't know why at the time but I was going through autophagy like I told you guys in the beginning of this video. Your body, I was going through autophagy. My body was eating up useless old dead cells and useless protein from the uh, so it was use, uh, eating up a dead skin or, or um, loose skin and that kind of thing. And um, when I did eat you know it was uh, low in, low in uh, usually a uh, low in carb low in fat and that was during the time that I was just feeling like a robot you know I wasn't getting any fat from uh, my diet in the diet so I felt very weird I was going low carb as well you know the highest fat I was getting was only getting in my f fish oil and CLA and then intermittent fasting but at the time I thought I was just starving myself so it was usually like on a Wednesday and a Sunday I was uh, doing like a 36 or 48 hour fast and like breaking in my breaking the fast was just egg whites tuna and beans and that's about it you know wasn't really eating that much you know but that's how I got very very lean but at the same time I don't recommend that because I did feel like mentally I felt weird I even though when I broke my fast I felt great had tons of energy in the gym just a little bit amount of carbs I got from the beans was enough to just give me tons of energy. But I felt like a robot, guys. I felt weird, you know. It was like I had no emotions. My anxiety was crazy. Like one little thing could like make me cry. But that could also be because I was overtraining, you know, to kill myself. Going to the gym, no days off whatsoever. Doing 25 miles of total cardio. So that was like... This might sound crazy, but it was a mixture between uh, going on the bike, the elliptical, the treadmill, running, that kind of thing, until I added up to uh, 25 total miles. So riding the bike for about a half an hour got me about 10 miles, and maybe go on the bike a second time will give me another 10 miles, and then 5 miles of just on the treadmill, 
and the bike or just walking with a weighted vest in total. Another thing was uh, eating, no, uh, doing a fat burning uh, cardio after your last meal of the day. Or I called it my food digesting cardio basically. I would put on, um, after my last meal of the day, I would uh, put on a weighted vest and go walk on the trail uh, about two and a half miles. I would do that after my last meal of the day just all the freaking time or anytime I got hungry and started thinking about food. I would go and do cardio instead to keep my mind off of food. So just 24 seven around the clock, I was just constantly keeping my body active. And so yeah, guys, that's basically, to answer your question, that's how I lost 78 pounds and 29% body fat. First four weeks was keto. Second four weeks was carb cycling. Last four weeks was just was low fat and low carb and intermittent fasting, you know? So you guys could give that a try. I don't recommend the last four weeks one. I think, um, it would be a great idea to do keto, carb cycling, then keto and intermittent fasting as well. Or maybe just longer fast. Or maybe just start introducing intermittent fasting through the very beginning. And maybe during the last four weeks start doing what I'm doing, which is alternate day fasting. So try something like that. Or maybe you could do uh, eight weeks of keto, four weeks of carb cycling. You know, your body at that time after eight weeks of going keto, your body's going to be very insulin sens uh, sensitive. You don't have to worry about those carbs going to fat stores. It could be going straight to glycogen. So you're going to look more muscular. You're going to be, get better workouts, better pumps, and that kind of thing. So take it however you want. That's how I did it. And um, yeah, that's that's to answer your question, Tally Hoops. So that's how I did it, guys. That's how I dropped 78 pounds. But if you were wondering about the, the other one, how I dropped over 100 pounds, strictly keto, cheat day on the weekend, one cheat day a week for 12 weeks. That's the only thing I did. Nothing special about it. Just keto and a cheat day. But for the this one, it was a little bit more complex, you know. So anyway, guys, I'm sorry for the length of this video. I forgot how many questions I had. But um, anyway, so once again, guys, thank you so much for 18,000 subscribers. And 20,000 subscribers is going to be a really, really big deal. By my calculations, I'm probably going to be getting uh, 20,000 subscribers by the end of this transformation. So probably sometime in April. That's my guess, you know. So once again, guys, thank you so much. And I hope you guys took a lot out of this video. And um, yeah, hope you guys have a great day. If you're doing the transformation with me, you know, I hope it's going great for you as well. You know, I hope you guys beat me. You know, that would be really cool. Or do better than me, I should say. Because um, in this current situation, yes, guys, of course, I would love to win 100 grand. It would change my life forever. It would change my family's life. It would change my life on YouTube in general, you know. But um, I'm just, the way I look at it, if I lost over 100 pounds in 12 weeks and didn't win, or I lost over 78 pounds and didn't win, it just seems like I'm never going to win. So let me just put it this way. What the Bible.com is most likely looking for, if you're someone between the ages of 30 and 50 years old and you're a male, shoot for a four, I'll probably say about a 40 to 50 pound weight loss that's what they're looking for a middle-aged man about a 40 to 50 pound weight loss because all the previous winners that won the 12 week transformation has always been that way middle-aged man 40 to 50 pound weight loss so that's why I'm thinking like if I end up losing over 50 pounds and I'm young I'm not gonna win I don't know why maybe they'll think like if you lost over 50 pounds you're on steroids or you have too much uh, testosterone, you're too young or whatever, or maybe losing over 50 pounds in 12 weeks might be unhealthy. I don't know guys, but like I said, if you're a middle aged uh, man, shoot for that 40 to 50 pounds. That's what they're looking for. If you're a woman, I'll say about 30 to 40 pounds and also middle aged. Middle aged woman, 30 to 40 pounds, middle aged man, 40 to 50. Anyway. Uh, this is going to probably be two parts. Oh my god. I'm going to have to split this up into two parts. Anyway guys, hope you guys enjoy this video. So, like this video if you want to see more. Subscribe if you've not already. Until next time, I'm already sexy. And you stay sexy my friends. Take it easy. Bye bye.